Hi, everybody, and Hello. welcome to our hobby stream. I'm here with Brett. I'm Zach. Um, Good to see you guys. Yeah, today we're doing something kind of exciting, a little different. Um, you're seeing a, let's be honest, a glamorized version of a behind-the-scenes behind event the scenes. prep. <laughs> um, I like this, how how you you and uh, a lot of the members of Fault Line got together and started working on this. Um, and, but I get to just like take this you thing. Get to, I get to finish it. Be like, Look what it, I did. We did it ninety percent of the way there. We're like, all right, let's turn the last ten percent into content. Look what I did, Colin. Colin, yeah. So our, yeah, <laughs> our friend Colin did says has spent probably six hours on this model, and, and you're gonna get to do the last, <laughs> last two. Of, yeah, I'm gonna bring it home. Yeah. Take the credit. Yeah. Um, I didn't tell Colin that that I was gonna snatch this away from him at the last minute, but it is like it's at the perfect stage for a two hour hobby light, hobby show. Yeah, yeah. To just to show off the finished product. I'm actually excited to show off what this is and have yeah. you talk about it. But yeah. can you tell us about what it is we're doing today? We are doing some terrain work for uh, an upcoming narrative 40k event called Maelstrom Mixer. If you're a fan of the show and have seen any of our last few uh, last few shows, you all have seen us promote it. This is a uh, Narrative 40K event put on by our local club, Fault Line 40K, uh, in San Jose. Uh, tickets, there are a few tickets left if you live in the in the Bay Area or are interested in traveling to the Bay Area. I think it is well worth a trip if you uh, uh, have a, a, a budget to travel for Warhammer. We'll talk about that. We'll, we'll make our case for that during yeah, the stream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's a, it's a, a bunch of custom missions on amazing terrain with super well-painted armies. It's very hobby-forward. Uh, very narrative, lots of uh, fun, fun, fun times to be had. If you're new to the stream, or if you're watching this afterwards, um, and you're still interested, and it's you know only a few days after the stream, it's not like 2028, and you're watching it. Um, go the link to the website is right underneath. Yeah. So you can click and, and get your ticket that way. Check it out. It's um, not it's not BCP, importantly. Right. Yeah. You, no. It's, you can't get your ticket on BCP. We're not. It's not. It doesn't show up on on uh, on BCP. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's a it's a cool event. We're doing some terrain for it here today. So one of the highlights of this event is the terrain. Uh, so many of the missions are played on boards that the club has designed specifically for this event, where the terrain matches the mission. So like instead of it just being like a generic set of wilderness terrain with some like forty millimeter poker chips in the middle of the board that you for some reason care about mm -hmm. uh there are, you know are like specific thing when you have, need to plant uh explosives on a power generator there will actually be a power generator there for you to plant the explosives on etc so um yeah so a lot of this terrain is made just for this event uh it's very sort of curated and bespoke and so as a result of that like Every year we put on this event, we have sort of a new plot. We have new ideas for how the story is going to unfold and what the missions are going to be. And so we need to sort of, it's an excuse to like buy some new train kits, uh, paint them up. And that's what we're doing here today. Yeah. Um, uh, this is, do we want to show, why don't you show what you're up to? Sure. Here, yeah. Here, I can sure. switch here. So um, I posted a picture of this in the Discord uh, yesterday. Uh, this is a truck that I'm working on looks vaguely familiar if you're a fan of 80s cartoons. Uh, it's got a trailer, uh, also appropriate. Um, so I worked on doing some weathering. This is, um, I, I might take this a little bit farther today, but this is actually maybe far enough uh, if, if I don't have time. I've got another truck though uh, that I've been working on. Um, and this other truck uh, has had none of the weathering done. So I did a little, um, Zach helped me with uh, with some airbrushing before the show. We did an a uh, an airbrush stripe, uh, and so I'm gonna. Do, we saved the the grand reveal of the uh, removal of the the masking tape for for the show because we know that that is super satisfying to watch. So we got a stripe here. You know what, Brett? It is, but I have to say that. I think you more than anyone finds it. Oh my god, I love it! I love removing. <laughs> you always want to save the reveal for. for I, it's so satisfying. It's, I love it. It's not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, <clears throat> this this kit, this uh, truck kit, is super interesting. Um, oh my gosh, I'm pulling off. I'm pulling off paint. I hate it. I should have varnished first. Uh, even with blue tape. Yeah, this. Um, oh man, it's resin and like even with primer. Nice, nice enamel primer. It's still oh, but we can off. just. Re I can touch it. Yeah, touch that's fine. It's uh, annoying. <clears throat> Did that. you print those? Ah. 
No, um, these are not printed. They're um, <clears throat> they're purchased. Okay. Uh, from from Puppets War, so Puppets War sells uh, resin models. Some you know some gaming models as well. But yeah, um, this is a cool kit that they've got, uh, and I'll show you. It's actually very um, have a cab at the back, or be um, and then and then the this this uh, here this is the same kit. Um, this, this is removable. So, you know, you can, they've got a different oh, sort nice. of front option that you can put on. Uh, so it's sort of a different front option and a different back option. Um, yeah. Um, and, um, and then these little receptacles here, these little round bits have, you can put weapons in them. I'm really into, um, I'm really into like parked cars and stuff <laughs> as terrain. Oh my gosh. This is, yeah, this is my new favorite thing is like, um, uh, like, hey, all of these these things we're doing are ruined cities. Uh, what about, like, non-ruined cities? What about, like, cars? Like, where are all the, the vehicles that people get around in? Or even if it is ruined, still, where are all the cars? Yeah, there would be ruined cars, right? <clears throat> yeah, or, and some that aren't. Right? Look at this bubbling that's... Um, no one's going to bespokely target civilian cars, especially, right, during, like, a... Right, right. I mean, they might, I guess. It depends. In the 41st millennium, who knows? This is super weird to me. The nice thing is it's terrain. Yeah, it's terrain. Um, um, but it is super annoying. And, you know, I have to say that I, I'm i so... We, you and I have... We, uh, you know, and, and um, the person you're working with, our, our friend Michael Dunsmore. Yeah. Um, it, Michael Dunsmore and I did a lot of... Um, <clears throat> making molds and then yes. doing resin casting right. years ago. Yeah, this is that kind of resin. And that yeah. happens all the time on yeah. our stuff. And yeah. cuz there's mold release, right? There um so yeah, uh, yes. It also just doesn't seem to stuff love doesn't it. stick to it very yeah. well. Um it's like not particularly unusual um for that to for that to happen. Okay, um, well, yeah, I'm going to clean it up the best I can. This this thing here where it sort of bubbled up but didn't completely tear off is like super weird to me. I don't know what to how to make it stick back down. Um, other than maybe I'll just tear it off and like reapply new paint. I'm confused. I mean, you you wanted Never to you wanted to do some sponge before. damaging to this vehicle anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. That honestly, what I would probably do is is hit is where you're painting right now. I'd probably do primer yeah okay and then just make sure that you sponge there <laughs> that's probably right. what i would do um and i can get you a, a primer i mean a part of me wonders if if i if i varnish after after i put this paint on is it is that enough is that going to do the trick uh, we've had a lot of party lights happening so let's catch up a little yeah. bit here and then what i um asked brad about is if you would talk a bit about mixer today um, yeah yeah definitely to 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 um, make his case for it. Um, it sold a lot of tickets, and you, you guys are only selling how many tickets? Uh, we cap it at 60. Uh, we've sold close to 40 right now. Okay. So it's not in any serious danger of selling out, but also 60 is kind of a lot. Um, I th I'm not sure if we have a plan for if we sold 60 tickets. Oh, but here we are <laughs> on stream about to talk about why people should go to it. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's just see what happens. We'll see what happens. I would figure it out. It's a good problem to have. That's right. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, thanks for people who have been super chatting and um, giving us also gifted memberships. Uh, that's Yeah, uh, thanks, guys. Most of you know that we love that and appreciate it and it helps us, and um, we're always grateful. Molecule says, real power generators, real explosives, real fun. Um, and Pretty much. Yeah. Um, Molecule uh, came to this event last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's uh, he signed up again this year. Yeah, so exciting, that's that's a, to see him. that's some endorsement right there. Yeah, that's good. Coming that's back a second time, maybe like the best endorsement. Um, yeah, I'm um, I'm excited to to see him and some of the other people from this community and other online communities uh, make it out for this. I know that. Um, and you actually, so you brought up something about doing something with explosives that's like part uh, of the theme of the stream of or is that are you giving too much away is that explosive oh no no um you know uh i guess 
yeah, let's talk a little bit about the event format. So this is a thing that um, I've never seen done before, uh, which is here. I'm gonna start doing some sponging. Yeah. Okay. Get my sponge out. Yeah. We'll flip back to you in a second. Um, this is a thing I've never seen done before in in an organized event. So I've seen you know we've done it just like in in friendly games like hey let's let's play a, a weird narrative mission, mm -hmm. um, but I've never seen this done in like a official event sort of put on that's open to the public that anyone can just turn up to. Like if you go to LVO narrative, if you go to Nova narrative, if you go to any of these you know sort of larger. Uh, open the public narrative events. They have sort of a very recognizable format. It's 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 a lot of like either crusade, or, um, uh, you know, normal normal style, uh, well, normal style like uh, GT competitive missions, with some kind of story tacked onto mm -hmm. it, um, and or maybe not. Like sometimes. Sometimes the the narrative is just a slider. It's like it's like a massive team game, like a, a forty v forty team game where your wins move a bar, and whoever sort of has the more the the, the longer bar at the end of the event has like taken the planet, and then that's the story. Okay. Yeah. Um, true. Which fair, fair. which just kind of like feels a little generic to me. Um, so, so yeah, so this mis this, uh, this event has a completely different format than any that you will have seen before. Um, uh, so how does it work? So, um, each, uh, the event is broken up into war zones because, uh, and, and a war zone is, uh, sort of a bespoke conflict between two or maybe three factions where, uh, where you know you have a, a, a sort of protracted conflict that that plays out over a series of multiple games. So one of the other sort of weird things about um, about narrative events is that in game one you might play against you know if, let's say you're playing as Imperial Fist Space Marines. In game one you might play against Drukari, and you have this in fun, interesting narrative sort of play out between your Imperial Fists and your opponents Drukari. And then in round two, you might play against uh, Tyranids. You're like, wait, how? Why? Why? why am I all of a sudden now on a different planet playing against a completely different alien species? Like, okay, and so you sort of come up with some... You can make that work, but you you're can make always... That. Yeah. You're always, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of doing this, these mental gymnastics to sort of figure out, why am I all of a sudden now doing this other thing on this other planet against these other aliens. Um, so at Maelstrom Mixer, uh, you will play all of your games in, in a single war zone, which, which is defined by a conflict between you, your faction, and one opposing faction. And so your faction might not just be Imperial Fist Space Marines, it might be Imperial Guard allied with Imperial Fist, allied with Imperial Knights or something like that. There's a, you know, sort of an Imperial outpost on this world and you're all there defending it and you're being attacked by Tyranids, let's say. So um, all of your games will, will take place against Tyranids or, or GSC or some sort of Tyranid adjacent bio organism. <laughs> um, and, and, and so that might be a downside for some people. I've heard some people sort of wish that the event sort of allowed them to play a more variety uh, against a, a wider variety of opponents but um yeah so like that's this year that's that's we've actually taken that to heart and we've expanded some of the alliances a little bit so that you're not just playing against tyranids maybe you're yeah gsc some imperial guard who are not quite fully converted to gsc etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, it fits into a, a storyline for you know a, a conflict that might take place over a week or two in quote-unquote real time uh, but yeah, the uh, the games all take place against uh, sort of one other uh, super faction. And each round, this is the other sort of weird thing about it, each round your team, your your super faction, let's say you're, you're a team of five people, you get a dossier of five mission documents, one for each person on your team. And you as a team decide who wants to play which mission. And so, if your so some of these missions might be sort of fast attack missions, some of them might be uh, 
defend the stronghold kind of missions. Some of them might be assassination missions. And so as, as, a, as a group, you sort of sift through these missions, decide who's going to play what based on either your interests or your, your, the army you brought to the event. Um, and and you, you break up these missions and decide who's going to play which one. You don't know which, who your opponent is, although you might know their general sort of super faction. Uh, but you don't know whether your opponent is Greg or Bob or Frank. Um, and then once you have selected your mission as a team, you, you know which mission you're going to be playing, you sit down and make a list for it. Um, and this is another sort of really interesting part of the, the gameplay experience is you make your list after you know what mission you're playing. Um, now, you don't necessarily know what your opponent's objectives are because objectives in Maelstrom Mixer are unique to each player. I forget, do you make your list... Um, <laughs> Do you make your list? You make your list after you know who your opponent. Is? Well, you you kind of know the opponent, like you, you kind of know the you know what their faction is generally. But do you specifically know your opponent? No, you don't. You don't. Okay, right. so like you don't necessarily know if you're playing maybe like against uh, like Imperial Guard or Space Marines. If you're right, exactly, okay. correct. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's an important detail, and. Um, and, and, and you know what your objectives are, but you don't necessarily know what your opponent's objectives are because the objectives are often asymmetric. So you might be trying to blow up these power generators, as we talked about. They might be trying to assassinate your characters. And so it's possible that both players can, quote-unquote, win the mission by scoring maximum points on their objectives, uh, which is it's just super interesting to me. Like, the yeah, idea yeah. that both players can, quote-unquote, win a game, that's like... That's, that, that's like... That's the ideal situation, right? Like both of you have a great time. Both of you like scored, did all the, all the things. Somewhere along the end, there's there's there will be a cost to of letting your opponent get away with that, of course. But, right, right, yeah. right. In the interim, you're kind of like, whoa, that we both did our things. We both did our things. Kind of interesting, yeah. right? Um, yeah, and so uh, so after you you pick your mission, uh, you make your list, then you walk over to the table that's called out on the mission document. And you figure out who you're playing against. Um, and this is, you know, sort of the moment you see, okay, am I playing against Space Marines or am I playing against Imperial Guard? Am I playing against, you know, which of the sort of, is it, is it Greg or Bob or Frank? Um, <clears throat> you figure all that out when you get to the table. Um, and then, yeah, you like, you start deploying. You, you, uh, your, your mission document, your, your dossier might be completely different to your opponents, again, because they're sort of, it, the, the, your objectives are, are unique to, to your uh, your dossier and um, and also the the army lists might you know restrictions might be different your opponent might have restrictions on how many vehicles they can bring if they're sort of the mission is about infantry your army list might require you to bring a certain character or like um, <clears throat> or, or restrict you from bringing you know no 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 you know, epic heroes, or, you know, there might sort of be, like, specific army list restrictions for each mission. Um, and you might even have asymmetric points. We, we tend not to do a lot of this, but, like, if it's meant to be sort of a desperate last stand, you might end up have a few less points on the field to sort of represent the fact that you're, you have limited resources, or maybe you have an advantage in the mission in some other way, and and so this, this is sort of offset by the fact that you have uh, fewer fewer points on the field. Um, so yeah, it's like we play with all of these different things, uh, just to sort of shake it up a little bit and, and make it different from, you know, the normal 40k experience, uh, and what I think is very interesting ways. Um, so yeah, um, all of this is, all of this is part of the, what's, what's kind of happening behind the scenes. Um, there's a whole team of folks doing playtesting the different missions and coming up with the different plot elements, um, putting together the terrain uh and it's it's super fun it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of fun critical the play testing is critical right um and you know i not to not to dox other events or throw any other events under the bus but we've been to some narrative events i don't always have a sense that missions are play tested right um, at narrative events and and it's one of the things that has stopped me from going to narrative <laughs> events it's sort of like listen if the person doing this event couldn't really be bothered to do this event then I am also not going to be bothered to do this event, right? right. But um, when, last year when I was at Mixer, it was pretty evident that there was um, a significant amount of effort and 
uh, love put into making sure people had good games. Yeah, it was. Thank you. I, it that definitely was the case. Yeah, I think the classic one, right, is uh, you know, you can like earn experience points for your warlord in a lot of these kinds of events, mm -hmm. and and sometimes you gain fame or infamy for like killing an enemy character in melee, and you're like, my 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 warlord is a is an imperial guard like commander he's not his job is not to kill things in melee it's to like yell at people yeah, it's not very well know? thought out when people do that. <laughs> and, and they're like oh that, no that's how you do it it, it. Makes, you it makes you points. feel it makes you feel like whenever that's happened and the exact example you're saying has happened to me on more than one occasion yeah, yeah. uh and m by and large i've played tau at narrative events and it, the exact example you're saying comes up has come up more than once like kill something in melee and um Back in, I mean, maybe I don't know how a Tau command Tau commanders can do not half bad, but they're not going to kill your average uh, like chaos hero. Sure, sure, right. right. And um, it always makes me. I always leave with the sense that, um, like, okay, well, either the person doesn't didn't think about this, right? They mostly just didn't think about didn't it. think about it, or worse, like d doesn't care, and or like literally doesn't like. Like non melee factions thinks oh, like that yeah. this game should have mate like you're that's like part of what defines the yeah, game. Yeah, maybe for that's them, right? it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. There's there's a mix. I, I think mostly it's didn't think about it. Um, uh, that's that's I don't know if that's the worst one or not, but it is one. Right. Yeah. No, yeah either we had, way, we had a planning meeting uh, just this week actually, and we were talking about some sort of a level up mechanic or uh, an advancement mechanic that's massively simplified from GW's Crusade. Um, but it's, it's a way for you to sort of earn a single upgrade at some point during the event. And one of the upgrades was, uh, that, that was, we, we talked about, you know, we went through a bunch of them and it was, there was, there was a couple of them that were like, oh, if you apply this, if your warlord is a Lehman Rust tank commander and you give every one of their guns plus one strength and AP, like... That's kind of broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if you even on a top commander, if you do that, like that's that's amazing. Um, so we we kind of talked through a couple of them. We're like, hey, like let's tone this down in these ways. Oh, how do we sort of make this applicable to Tyranid factions? How do we make this ap applicable? To, so like, there's a lot of thought that has to go into it to sort of at least superficially consider all the edge cases or, or as many as you can, and then you know you dress the rest in the moment. Uh, if if you're about to hand an upgrade card to, you know, somebody who, and you look at the table and their their warlord is a, you know, some an, an imperial knight with four four guns, each of which has four d six shots. Like, oh, this is this is maybe an an issue if we give all of your ranged weapon if ranged weapons plus one AP for the rest of the event. Right. right, right, right. Maybe that's maybe that's not the best. Right. So yeah, I I feel like um. So yeah, teams it, teams hard at work. The 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 team thing is was very cool. The 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 like kind of pod. I I always call it the pod. The pod. Yeah, that's constant. a that's that's a super cool element that I like. That you're at an event with with forty people, fifty people, um, but the really it's it's kind of a 10 v 10 or sorry a, a, like five or six six v six or five v five kind of experience so you get to to know and interact with a small subset of the of the event like really in, in, a, in a in a great you get really close to those that that group that you're playing with yeah yeah it's, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun and last year you you did some fun alpha you were playing alpha legion you did some fun alpha legion things where you sort of leaned into your uh <laughs> oh yeah yeah you did some larping a little bit i did a little bit of larping tell yeah that story well i mean <laughs> we you end up you end up kind of becoming um you know friendly with the the other team you're playing yeah, hopefully yeah. um and certainly we did and so i would do things like go over and kind of ask them questions and then at first like you know our friend andrew white who's been on our our stream yeah um he was you know at first he he was like oh just giving me the information yeah and then later he found out i was using it to like set things up and he was like you jerk and then like he was like oh that's, that's funny though right like um right because each before each game you're i don't sort think of, it really did much you're sort of meeting <laughs> with your fun. team to like strategize about yeah, how yeah. or who's going to play which mission how are we going to oh so and so might be 
we might be. I think that so and so is going to go to this mission, so maybe we should like have you go against them because if, if they end up going there, then then your army would be well suited into them, kind of thing. And you just walked over to their meeting, you know, and just kind of sat down and hung out with them. And they got like <laughs> they got like ten minutes into their conversation about who was going to go oh, where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before before they realized, oh, like wait, should Zach wait, be here? Zach's not even. He's like on the other team. And you're like, <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> like you just kind of walked away. Yeah. Did your did your like fun Alpha Legion thing? The other nice thing we did um, that was not Alpha Legion y, but towards the end we were kind of like I think there's one oh, on our last match we just made sure that all four people played all everyone that we had no repeats. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah. Um, and it's it's nice because like the prize supports are very good, but the nice thing about a narrative event like this is that like you're not winning prizes based on. You know, I a right. lot of people aren't but, aren't but, that incentivized by prizes anyway. Right. In a in a good and that can be a good thing, right? But like, still, that's not really how we give prizes out, right? That's not how you guys give prizes yeah. out. So, um, you're just you're kind of incentivized to just have fun. And if in the last mission you're like, hey, do you you know if your team go a five or whatever or six goes up to the other five or six and says. Hey, can we? Would you guys be cool making sure we have no repeats? Or yeah. like, oh, I really, I haven't gotten to play this guy yet, and I really want to. Can we? Right. Can we set that up? And like, people will be like, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it was good. Um, that worked out well. Um, this year, yeah, I remember last year, Saray had, uh, he played against the same person like every game, uh, <laughs> and it was fine. Like, yeah, he he didn't mind it. He had good games, but like. And some of them were team games, you know, it was like in 2v2 kind of situation. Right, but like right. the same person was on the other side of the table from him in all of his games. And uh, and yeah, that was like, that was that was another piece of feedback we got was like, hey, is there a way that we could, you guys kind of talked it out, which was, which was smart. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no sort of official way to prevent that from happening last year. Um, and part of the problem was last year, the teams were smaller. They were... There were three v three or four v four, and so this year we're we're having there be fewer war zones, and the teams are a little bit bigger, to hopefully minimize the chances that that something like that will happen again. Right. Uh, but um, but yeah, I don't know. It was it was, it was a lot of fun. It's um, good. Yeah, I strongly would encourage it. Um, if you're on the fence about it, if you're um, if you're on the fence about it, if you're um, you know, we, typically during our live stream, we, we have in, in here a lot of people we know. But uh, later on, other people watch the live stream. And so if you're less familiar with Brad and I or whatever, or our gaming group out here, um, I can say that it's, it's I, I promise you, it's a fun time. It's a good time. Um, and the, the earlier I was saying I, I'd make a case for the Bay Area being a good area to come to. Um, and you know, if you have a larger vacation budget and you want to like actually do things for like the few days before or after, oh yeah, it's a good place for that. You can see redwoods. Yep. You can do a mi good, pretty good mix of city stuff and nature stuff. What would be? Do you have any restaurant recommendations if you're doing like someone was in the area for for two or three days? Um. Oh sure, sure, sure. Um, and if you are and you're in our Discord, hit me up because I'll, I'll toss some out. Just just off right out of the gate but yeah i have a i have a i have a loaded this is i'm asking this question with a i have a i have a oh you agenda. have a, you have a particular one well um depending on what part of the u.s you're from or, or the world that you're from if you're coming um it's san jose it's it's highly likely um we have as good or maybe better that of um mexican food mexican food right um then then you might be used to and in particular i would say um if meg's in chat um, so it's called La Vix is like the big, um, place that's famous for what's called orange sauce, which is, uh, a, a Mexican American creation that comes from San Jose. Um, orange sauce is this kind of spicy, garlicky, creamy sauce that they put on a lot of food out here. Um, Mexican food. Hmm. Interesting. But Meg, if you're in chat, do you remember the, if you're watching, do you remember the, it's not, um, La Vix. It's the, there's another place that does orange sauce that we actually like better. It starts with an A. Anyway, um... And one of the things I'm thinking yeah. of is putting together like a, hey, while we you're should. in town, we like should, here's yeah. our recommendation for for food. If you have it one day, here's like where we recommend you visit. If you yeah. have two days, here's where we recommend you visit. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally great idea. Um, I think. How do you feel about the burger bar? 
Have I been to the Burger Bar? I have not. It's it's kind of by Michael's house, by Dunsmore's house. I don't think I've been there. It's like it used to be five burgers for five dollars. Is there like it's like a slider? It's like a it's like a, a mom and pop version of White Castle. It's like a slider joint. Oh, okay. Uh, but now it's five burgers for ten dollars. Still, still good. Still good. But I don't know. I've never been there. I've heard that it is sort of a. A San Jose establishment. I should go. I, I, Megan, I've never been there. Actually, yeah, I've never been there. I will say that. Um, I I will say that if you're coming to San Jose, South Bay area, and you want to get food that um, is probably going to be particularly good in the area, um, Mexican is is one option. Yeah, Mexican. I, I yeah. would say, and then the other ethnic cuisine that's very big out here because we have a huge dice boards of Yemenis. Yep. I was going to uh, say Asian soups. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, that's pretty, this, I think like there's a lot of places to get pho and ramen, but um, like out here and then in other parts of the country, but I definitely would say um, uh, um, Vietnamese food and, and there's a few places um, that we could recommend. Um Mommy's Bon Me. Not Mommy's is gone. Oh, they're, they're out of business. Uh, That's right. San, San Fernando. Uh, or Bon Me Oven on San bon Fernando. Bon Me Oven. Right. This is what we like a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, which I think is better than Mommy's anyway. Mommy's was doing like these weird kind of like fusion ones, which were good actually. I'm, I do kind of miss them. Yeah. Um, like they had the lemongrass patty thing. Right. Yeah, they had some interesting ones. I, I, um, I'm curious. Maybe this should be our poll. Uh, if we do a second one, is like, what is your favorite Asian soup? Oh, pho ramen. Pho ramen, udon, hot pot. Yeah. Um, all subtly different. Yeah, I would. I would say that. Um, I'm. I'm trying to think. By the way, I. Uh, just so you know, I'm. I'm gonna keep working on this. Yeah. You're like, I'm done. I am done. I could be done. I'm gonna <laughs> let this dry and do. I. I'm. Do you want to show it off? This is not a dig on Colin, but I don't know why it took him so long to get why that. Oh, was, he was very. Oh, he was doing the rest very of it too. meticulous, also. And also, he was doing the rest and of it. And he had no idea what he was like. He'd never used the product before, so okay. he was being like super careful about it. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Um, I have to keep working on this where we talked about the cape changing. Yeah. Um, and I think the way I'm gonna do you it. Show it while you're. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should I pass it? Let me pass no, it to you. Okay. To we'll get a better view this way. There you go. There she is. <laughs> um, so t t tell us about this product. We'll talk. We'll go back to talking about food in a sec. You know, I um, oh man, I, don't, I can't even get. All right. <clears throat> uh, so this is a Sororitas statue, uh, 3D printed. You know, I, I should have done my homework ahead of time and and had the artist, but uh, I downloaded from Gun Road, Gum Road. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it comes with a base, the base we modified. So this is not the stock base. Uh, we modified it to have this like explosion here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's printable. She's got a sword. There's different options. The sword can be flaming. Um, but it's, it's nominally meant to be the statue that the Umbral six model sits in. Mm -hmm. So like, it's sort of, if you can imagine that Umbral six model, the like, Vindicare Sniper <clears throat> sits in, it's got a, like the head of a statue modeled as part of the kit. Uh, imagine that like, this is the statue that that, that, that guy's yep. in. Um, so in theory, if you took your Umbral 6 model, didn't put him in the head, you could in theory sort of stick him in in, the, yeah. in here. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. Um, and, then, and then we're using the Dirty Down Vertigo Dirty. product. I do think one thing I'm noticing is I think there might be a likelihood that Colin was did not have it shaken up enough. Yeah. Um, because you see, I'm getting much more of the powder, the the the, the fill, green, the, yeah. the, the opaqueness, right, um, to it, which is fine. I'm gonna now kind of work to smooth that all around. Right. Okay. Good. Um, I was gonna say, can you use less of it and or go back over some of the? Blends? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna or do a little bit of a little bit of both, a little, bit, little bit of both, okay. kind of blend things together. All right. Fine. Can you undo what you just did there, Zach? A little bit. Great. <laughs> um, Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna kind of blend things up a bit, and we want more of it kind of sitting down towards the bottom, and we have that already on the cape. So now, yeah. first thing I'm gonna do is kind of try to blend the cape in here together. 
Uh, the cape was like two different parts you were saying, right? Yeah. Um, this is this is interesting. Yeah, the the model was came pre supported, but it's it was all solid. It came, but it came pre supported for resin printers, uh, but it was all solid, uh, which is crazy to me. It was like, uh, I don't know, most of a liter of resin to print that. Most of the, like the base is just a solid chunk of resin, um, and. I forgot to print the bottom half of her cape, uh, and it sort of looked fine without it. Um, but then realized later, I was like, "Oh, this!" I saw some pictures of the finished thing online. I was like, somebody else had made. I was like, "Oh, I, I missed a whole piece of this." Um, so now we had to go back, print it, print the last piece, and now you're sort of blending in that piece that got paint printed after the fact and painted separately. Um, Having to bl having to do some work to blend it together. Yeah, which is which is fine. Um, Brett, we yeah. were we we like to have our goofy segments here. Yeah, we were talking about um, you know LVO and around here we say mixer and everybody knows what that means. Right. Um, we were saying that you know in any in any field that that's a thing, right? And every field has its conventions um, oh what, yeah um i never it's acronyms that right. everyone just knows what they mean Me megan and i worked with a bunch of music education majors at the camp we worked at and they they had this one they called that the camp was in michigan and it was a thing they just called northwest or uh, midwest or actually i don't even remember what they called it but it was like a region of the country that this event took place in yeah and that's what they referred to it as they right? just referred to it as midwest yeah, I forget what it was called, but they they all went every year and saw each other, and it was fun. You're gonna be at Midwest this year? I mean, no, I I wasn't a music ed major, so I never went to this thing. But, um, yeah, the, exactly what you're saying is. But like, if well, you were to hear that and not be familiar know what, with the music industry or this camp, you'd be like, dude, what do you, what does that even mean? What does that mean exactly? Right. So, I thought that um I would do a little bit of research today, and I would find some, um acronyms and, yep. and con names and okay, you have fun. to tell me what the con is but before we do that we, we have to get through a lot of other uh, fan support stuff so nick uh nick says optimus train brett transform and roll out he's yes. talking of course about the optimus prime truck you had earlier. yeah earlier, you know yeah. i forgot to bring them uh this was the other thing i was going to show off today this optimus prime truck uh is specifically so so i saw this kit it's made like i said by puppets war and it immediately said optimus prime Video. so i was like oh that's cool uh, i just had kept that in the back of my head i didn't buy it uh but then later um a friend of ours marcus who's actually passed away uh built a board and as part of this board it was a it was a mining board mm -hmm. so it was like all these rocks and like excavation tools and stuff he had these um as part of this board he had these set of gene stealer cult and 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 imperial vehicles chimeras and uh rhinos and stuff converted with like you know because like all the rhino kits and chimera kits have like dozer blades on them and stuff right right so you had these all converted as like sort of mining equipment and gene stealer cart vehicles too like are all kind of mining vehicles um and so you had these all converted to be mining equipment and then he painted them like constructicons like bright green and purple mm -hmm. like like the old yeah decepticon uh combiners right and so I was like, oh, this is... So then when I saw this vehicle that very obviously looked like Optimus Prime, and then Marcus passed away, I was like, oh, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy this kit. I'm going to paint it to look like Optimus Prime, but, like, heavily weather it. And then it, I'm just going to stick it on this board the, of his terrain with, with his vehicles. And they're just going to sort of have this, like, stare off during, during the game. It'll be this fun little Easter egg um that you know people will be playing on this board that's infested with transformers that that they may or may not realize are 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 hiding in plain sight sort of their uh sort of their thing as it were yeah um so i yeah, i i do remember his the the bright the super bright statues so I got a little distracted. I'm looking up um, sure. some vertigree statues. Yeah. Okay. I kind of want to see. Oh yeah. On ones that are like mid vertigreed. Yeah. Where the vertigree sits, and it's so weird because it's not. <laughs> this I remember going through this before. It's not like it. They sit. The vertigree sits in the cracks. Or on right. the raised areas. It's just like, it's just, it's just so everywhere. Freaking random. Yeah, it's just everywhere. Yeah, you can't really make sense of it. Or 
you can just do the statue like the Statue of Liberty and right. just one hundred percent patina. So I think what happens is that like it it gets washed off, like it it rusts on there, right? Like it's rust, but then it also will get sort of rubbed off or washed off um, by by weather or sand or wind or you know. I don't know no, if that's don't think so. correct. I, I'm not sure if you're right. I don't know because if that was true, the Statue of Liberty wouldn't be. Solid green, right? Do you think it's solid green? Like, if you get up close, it probably has that texture to it, I'm assuming. Mm, no? No. Okay. <laughs> no, because I've... You know how psychotically I researched this like, yes, a while back? I, I believe um, you. And there's a building in Minnesota, their, like, state government building, um, that's, like, super famous. The cap, the Minnesota Capitol building is beautiful, and it has um, a huge... Uh, um, Patina, is it Minnesota? No. Uh, what building is it? Wisconsin? It might be Patina Dome building. Um, there's, there's, oh yeah, it is in Minnesota. Um, and yeah, it's, it's like almost solid. Nice. Um, so, and it takes a while. Um, but I don't know. But then there are super bronze ancient ones. It's probably the weather right. has something to do with it. But the reason I bring it up is because, I mean, New York would get... New York gets every type of weather imaginable. Right. It would get wind, rain, snow, ice, hot, humidity. Is it right? acid rain? It could be getting acid rain, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll look around, um, but ultimately it's... I guess uh, if I could give feedback, mm -hmm. I was originally imagining it would have less patina than that. Less patina than this? Yeah, okay. but... but it's not. It's, it looks great. It's not okay. bad. I can different, I can adjust some different. areas, right? It's yeah, actually sure. very easy. Like so, you can see back here. I clear it off. Yeah. I kept patina on this side and yeah. here, and then here I I washed can, it off. And you can wash it off after it dries. You can pretty much wash it off. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, so you want to varnish it, but when before you're finally done, make the call on it. Um, okay. So uh, thank you, by the way, Nick, uh, for that, and thanks, Soups, for gifting a membership. We appreciate thanks, it. Your Nick. ongoing thanks, support. Soups. And thanks to Nasty for gifting five memberships also. We appreciate it. Sleepy Gary, I know that guy. Hey, Gary. Uh, Molecule says, in the grim darkness of the far future, there's only automotive vandalism. He's talking about your, um, oh, your, your my, pain coming. But my it looks like it's already off. been fixed. I mean, yeah. It's not. It's, it's still a little bubbly. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about this. I think I'm just going to put like eight coats of varnish on it. Um, Cass here. Then big thanks to Cass. Thank He's you, Cass. Gifting some sniping some people. Um, thanks, Cass, for gifting eleven, six, seven, seven memberships. Wow. And then for his uh, um, super chat here, six month super chat, he says, uh, just returned the favor for the snipe. I think he got he got sniped he got earlier. Sniped, um, like a while back, a few a few streams ago, I think. Hmm. Uh, thanks, Cass. Good to hear from you. Um, Paying it forward. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay, Brett, are you ready for this quiz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. So, Lay it uh, on me. We're going we're gonna to do a little, little uh, quiz here for Brett. Um, our first acronym is WFES. I bet they, the people in this call it uh, Dubfest. Mm. What do you think? Dubfest? You going to Dubfest? If, Dubfest. If someone says you going to Dubfest, are they talking about the Weird Food Eating Summit? Yeah, definitely not that. Okay, the Western <laughs> Finland Economic Symposium. Okay. Or the World Future Energy Summit. I think it's C. You think it's C, the World Future it's, Energy the C, Summit. C sounds like a real thing. Let's give people at B, home a B chance. sounds like a thing also. But. Not weird food eating? Um, like, I don't think the summit's meant to be weird. I think I think it's like the food is weird. The food is you weird? You go and you eat weird food we at this weird summit. Food. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, I don't think that's real. You're sticking with C? Yeah. The World Future Energy Summit. You're actually correct. Awesome. The World Future Energy Summit is held frequently in the Middle East, researched a little bit, held in the Middle East mostly by oil companies. Mm. Um, it's a great event. It's really designed to um, help them uh, prevent f future energies from coming to market. That's right. Um, and displacing they wanna, petroleum. They want to see They want to see all these up-and-coming companies so that they can then, <laughs> after the event, buy them out, up, buy them out, and shut and them down. And shut them down. And yeah. that is what happens. It's a great yeah. event. Um, okay, it was in Dubai last year. It's in uh, one of the other big Eastern European. So if you East, have a uh, you Gulf have a, state cities, yeah, yeah. If you want to get bought out, is it? It's a good one to go to. Companies. It's a good one to go to. Okay, 
Uh, next, here's the next one. All right, we got okay. three okay. of these, by the way. Okay. IML. Hmm. What do you think they call it? Just IML, right? You go to IML. Wow. You go to IML. Uh, Is it Internet are you, Management? Are you IML in this year? Yeah. Are you, you IML? IML. Okay. Is it Internet Management and Licensing? Yeah, I, I I could believe that. Is it Illinois Microdosing League? <laughs> <laughs> or is it International Mr. Leather? Uh, I think it's A. Internet Management and Licensing? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the first one was was easy. Yeah, I think it's A. You think it's A? I okay. It's a. All right, here we go. You're actually incorrect on this one. It is International Mr. Leather. Wow. Um, International Mr. Leather this year happening, I believe, in Chicago. Whoa. Here's a picture. This is pretty much Whoa. what you get. What you get for International Mr. Leather. Wow. It is a. Uh, it is a, 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 a leather. That's a thing. Thing. That's that is a thing right it's, there. It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing, and it's wow. real, and it is happening this year. Uh, but if you just we, type wait, in did you IML, say where it is? I think it said either last year or this year it's in Chicago. Chicago. If you just type IML, it'll go straight to this. This is the top IML result. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, you think that you get to a point in your life where you're like, I kind of, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm rarely surprised anymore. I rarely just sort of like. I'm hit out of the blue with a piece of knowledge that I just like had no clue about. Mm -hmm. that, that just happened to me right that now. That just happened to you. Yeah. You know what? This is I'm going to interrupt the quiz to say that I actually really love this Vertigree product. Yeah. Because you can put it on heavy and then you can wash away like down the direction you want, which is kind of a, the one thing I can have. Can we show it off? Yeah, yeah. Which is kind no, of. No, the, the uh, bottle. I want to show off the, the bottle. bottle. Yeah, yeah. Um, here. Let's go to. We'll come. We'll come right back to the because quiz. they're sponsoring Maelstrom Maelstrom Mixer. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah then uh, this is this is um, Goblin Hut is the Goblin Hut is the it. U.S. distributor for for Dirty Down products, and they uh, this is their Vertigree. Um, we've used their Rust uh, on stream before, and they have a Moss product as well uh, that I actually want to use on this statue after we're done with the Vertigree. Oh, okay. I want to use, I want to do some Moss on it, um, but yeah. the it's it's pretty amazing. You have to shake it a lot. Like you think you're like, oh, I, I shook it enough. No, you didn't. No, you, you keep, didn't. Keep and and they they mentioned it on the bottom or on the on the bottle about how you need to hear that ball start shaking. You guys have seen me on stream. I've done that with the rust. Yeah. It was really freaking hard on this. I actually went in with a stick and stirred it around to make it happen. I need to get some glue. Help yourself. I'm gonna pull back the next one. Yeah. The next uh, quiz okay. here. I'm ready. It's the last one. We figured out leather. Uh, we figured out the leather, the leather one. Okay, last one. Here we go. Lincoln. Ooh, love is, it. Is Lincoln a convention for linguicia sausage? Very mm -hmm. popular in the Bay Area. Okay. Okay. It's a Portuguese sausage. I actually don't exactly know why it's popular in the Bay Area. A convention for women named Linda, Lynn, etc. Or women or men who identify as Linda or Lynn, etc. Or is it a convention for Abraham Lincoln impersonators? Definitely C. Definitely, C. definitely C. Lincoln is yeah, because it's 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 spelling out Lincoln basically, right? Lincoln is like Lincoln without the L. It's cute, right? It is. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is spelling out. It's definitely C. That's a thing that convention goers mm -hmm. like to do. They, like, they to, like to the come little, up with clever, witty names for their convention. Clever wordplay. Yeah, and you're right. It is convention <laughs> yeah. for Abraham Lincoln impersonators. Love it. Uh, I'm so happy that here's this the exists picture. in the world. Wow. And this is the picture that they had up. I have a question for everybody. Uh, do you guys think that this man on the far right mm -hmm. is, he's clearly Frederick Douglass. <laughs> okay. Now, whenever they have Lincoln, do you think they have to be like, hey, we need a Frederick Douglass? Like, does this, did this guy want to come and be Frederick Douglass? Or did he want to come and be Lincoln? And they were like, no, you got to be Frederick gotta Douglass, be Frederick dude, because you're black. Or did they have to ask this guy... These guys and big. Hey, does anyone know anyone who will come and be Frederick Douglass? Like, how does Frederick Douglass fit into Lincoln in a non in a way that this man playing Frederick Douglass is happy right now? Like, he wasn't forced to be Frederick Douglass. Right. Um, he was a lot of questions. He felt respected. Yeah. I, he felt respected. And I'll tell you something else. This picture is about four times as big, and it's just all more Lincolns. So there's actually <laughs> wow. like the full picture is like oh, forty Lincolns and gosh. one Frederick Douglass. And I just want to know what's going That's on with the insane. Frederick Douglass. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Brett, you, you two out of three, pretty good. Yeah, that was hard. That um, I I love this idea that there are.
people in the world who are incredibly passionate about very different things than than I slash we are passionate mm-hmm. about. And, and you know, it, to the same extent that we're passionate about Warhammer and they have no clue what what any of this this stuff that we're talking about is, mm-hmm. like they are equally as passionate about whatever their thing is. Right. Like that. I love that idea. Um, and, and yeah, it, it brings me joy to, uh, to learn that there is a Lincoln in the world, you know? Yeah. An Abraham Lincoln, uh, right. centric with a little like Frederick, Frederick Douglass on the right. side. It sounds like, yeah. All right. So I am committing to gluing this little flap of paint down. Okay. Let's I don't know if anyone's ever had this happen wash before. With whatever it is you're doing. Cause it sounds <clears throat> um, like it's, but there's be, like, be look at so, so I can, I can take this tweezer and stick it in here and lift up this little flap of paint. It's like, there's a little flap of paint here. (laughs) Uh, And I can, I can, I can lift it up. Can you see that? That's crazy. And then I'm going to try to stick some glue in there and then, and then, and then squish it down. Uh, We'll see if that's successful or not. Uh, I've never done this before. I've never had this happen to me before. Where my paint, like, I've had paint come off of a, a resin surface like this, but never, like, just not tear in the process. So, yeah, we'll see uh, how this goes. I'm just going to, this is a, like, a thin CA. Um, and... Maybe I can try to kind of spread it around a little bit. I don't know. Sort of. <laughs> We're learning here on stream. I, I mean, I haven't used the Dirty Down Vertigree this much. We've used it only a small amount. Um, but it is, it, I like it. Um, it. It works a little different than the GW one, which I also like. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say... Yeah, takes some takes a little bit of getting used to, and yeah, it it definitely looks. My sense is that, like we said, like maybe it wasn't shaken up enough, um, or he was Colin was maybe using water while he was doing it. Yeah, we were thinking he probably wasn't doing that, but I, I he he it looks like he might have been, because once all I did to get this real heavy look yeah. was shake it up a lot and then shake just start and just, then just, just start putting. Yeah, it I on. think he used less as well. I think he was cautious about quantity. Uh, not wanting there to be overdo the effect. His, mm-hmm. I think his thought process was, oh, I can always apply more, but I can't take it off without realizing that that's actually not true. Like you, weirdly, to, you can't take it off. You can't take it off. Yeah. Um, okay. It's kind of interesting. We were talking before the stream about these products. Um, got the the Goblin. Uh, well, the brand is Dirty Down. The brand is Dirty Down. Their U.S. distributor is it's, Goblin. It's Goblin. Right? Go, yeah. Uh, we were talking about how it, it's not that these can be like a paint where it's the same formula applied with different colors. These have to basically be entirely different. Yeah. Um, entirely different, like, chemical uh, equations, which... Yeah, they, they behave very differently from, from product to product. But they all sort of have a similar kind of thing where they're like... Well, they're all water soluble. You're water soluble. You put it on, and then they they just they completely change look and color and feel and texture over over the course of drying. Mm-hmm. You know, they they like transform completely. Oh man, that's a. I'm doing a transformer, and you're you're painting transform with transforming paint. Yeah. Well, what a, what a time to be alive. Yeah, actually, I don't need to do. I don't need to do this because it's going to get covered up by. By this guy. Okay. All right, Brent. Let me show you what I have going on on, on her base. Yep. Um, and this is the base is kind of an area around the lower part of the cape. Okay. This is kind of around an area where I some parts of it I want to. I, well, I was gonna have it be more heavy, but I can, I can adjust. Um, and I'm still kind of working on it. But what I did is I wherever there's like a pool. Yeah. Um, I almost cleaned out the dirty down. Oh. Nice. And what I kind of a think i'm looking at is that if that happens on a statue there's a chance that water is sitting there a lot right and right. preventing the oxidation from happening I like at, it. at a higher level um and then i'm kind of going back and just taking just toning it down a little bit 
but um, otherwise leaving some of the the powdery stuff on yeah on the base but i'm going to go back and clean up the top part too yeah perfect yeah it's looking good and i think there's like a streak of a chunk of it here yeah i might take more off like i might kind of take more off on this side and right. say like this one side has all has more and this side doesn't whatever why why whatever that is whatever that might be i like the idea that this is old and worn but not like destroyed you know it's still sort of standing and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a shrine that is has been around for a long time seen some stuff yeah it's a super cool piece yeah i i printed that over a year ago i remember yeah. and i just kind of was like i'm i'm absolutely going to use this at some point i don't know for what but you were kind of talking about, by the way, the the way the person sells the STL. Oh yeah, um, yeah. We were going to talk about that. They, yeah. they, it's like a. So, I wish I had. I wish I had uh, thought to we look up add, the artist. We can add the link. Yeah, we can yeah. add it to the yeah to the description after yeah. afterwards. But um, yeah, the the artist uh, has. The, the, this has kind of made the rounds a little bit. There's a couple different versions of it, but this one, the artist made it for available on Gumroad, uh, which and, and there's different pricing models that that you can do on Gumroad. And one of the ways they one of the, the what they chose to do was to make it available for however much you wanted to to donate. It was a there was a suggested donation, but like you could literally download it. I don't know if free was an option, but like one dollar was was certainly an option. Okay. Um, and so you could... That's a good... Actually, sorry to interrupt you for yeah. one second. That's actually... I like that about that free is not an option, but $1 is. Right. Because once you switch... We were... Well, okay. I should let you finish. But we said that there are some problems with this. But I do kind of feel like once you switch from like... You actually are going to have to enter some kind of payment right. data. You kind of unlock someone just grabbing it for free and probably move into like... I'll at least pay $10. Right? I'll at least yeah. pay $10 yeah. for that. Right? Yeah. Like... Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Brad, to interrupt you, but that I, no, I didn't fine. realize that. That's kind of interesting. I thought that was an interesting business model for distribution of something like this because it's it's something I, I, I you know I I've been working on a couple different digital designs for some uh, some three D printable models and have kind of went back and forth on like oh how do I sort of decide how much to charge and what platform do I use to sell it et cetera et cetera et cetera and um, and part of part of that is about like engendering yourself to the community. Like you don't want to sort of put something out there that's that's crazy expensive, and then people are like, "Whoa, dude, that's like you're just in it for the cash. This is a giant cash grab." Uh, as compared to like uh, you know making it available for free, but then you know you don't sort of it's not worth your time, and it's it ends up being kind of a you you end up sort of maybe getting like. You see your stuff all over the place, and maybe you have some resentment. You're like, oh, my stuff's out in the world, and I didn't sort of benefit from it in any way. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the idea of, of this sort of middle ground of like, yeah, it's it can be had for very affordably. Um, I want it out in the world, but if you can't if you can't afford to pay dozens of dollars, that 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 you can have it. Uh, for for not a lot of money, but if if you get a lot of value from it and you want and you can afford to pay dozens of dollars, then that's an option. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we were. I was kind of saying beforehand. I was saying I do like this, um, especially in our hobby because you have people that are twenty four, twenty eight, just out of grad school, just out of college. They played it as a kid and like oh, I want to get back in, but they're just starting in their career. You know, um, and they, they want to play, but, like, they don't necessarily have, you know, a ton of money, especially for some right. terrain, right? Right. Um, but the, 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 pro the sad reality is what we're saying is that there's always somebody that, like, values what they actually really – one of the reasons they even have maybe any hobbies is they want to see how much they can get for how little. Right. And, you know, and that's and, and that's yeah. rampant in the 3D printing industry, right? It, it feels like it, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people who get into 3D printing just because – just to screw it, screw it to the man. And I – well, not even just that. Yes, I, that, I feel that a little bit. But 
um, even even people that just want to, uh, I mean, I guess I guess that I guess that is it. What you're saying, I I kind of feel like it's pretty common to to find that kind of mentality. Like how how cheap can I do my hobby? Yeah, your hobby. You, you know, we talk about hobbying your hobby. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes hobbying your your hobby is getting a deal. Like that, right, that's right. your other hobby. My hobby is right, Warhammer. Right. My other hobby is getting a deal. Right. And, and I can combine these two hobbies. You'll see people who <laughs> who would probably say something to you and I like, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I'll pay in, I'm not going to pay GW, but I'll pay independent re- right, like, sure, more independent sure. people or whatever. But um, it's, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, I what you were saying almost kind of fixes that problem to an extent, I feel like. I mean... Because then you're you're really narrowing it down. Like the amount of people that are going to sign up, go on, and pay one dollar, right, are like not a lot unless they're doing like doing it for in a way that I guess they feel like they're they're coming out and being like, oh, cool, I'm using it for events, or I'm using it for other things yeah. that that I'm not really profiting off of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it is interesting. Have you, have you paid a lot for? Have you, is this the only thing you've bought that's like that? Yeah. So Gumroad as a platform is not mostly is mostly not for three D printing stuff. It's mostly for I think publications like anime, like people who want to self publish some no, anime novel they wrote oh, or okay. something like that. I think it's I think it's that's sort of mostly what it's used for as a platform. Um, but uh, it's 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 a fundamentally it's a point of sale for digital download. So it can absolutely be used for purchasing 3D printing assets um, or assets meant to be 3D printed. But um, yeah, so it does get used for that occasionally and it sort of is unique in as compared to like Colts 3D or uh, My Mini Factory or some of these other places where you can also buy 3D printing files in that it offers this option for like a pay what you want kind of thing which is neat i like that yeah um but yeah i've never this is the only this is only one that i've done that for or the only thing that i've purchased um that had that that distribution model so yeah it struck me i thought it was interesting folks we have a poll we're going to close it in, a, in about 30 what seconds is our poll? I didn't see our poll. yeah i wanted to know what other kind of cons people would be interested in oh yeah um so i said which con event are you dipping into based purely on curiosity cat show model trains artisanal mm-hmm. light bulbs and bronies mm. do you know bronies i do yeah, yeah. um i had a, a, a good friend who was a brony oh really yeah I don't know, well, maybe good friend's the wrong word. We, yeah. we played a video game together, and so we interacted a lot on, on the internet. Okay. Um, but yeah, he was... Yeah, that's interesting. Self-identified as a brony. Self-identified as a brony. Let's end it. Um, artisanal light bulbs won. Mm-hmm. That was the last thing I thought of to come up with, and I kind of just... I, I, we were running a little... I wanted to get the poll up. I thought that that was the dumbest one. However, it appears that our fan base would disagree with me once again. Because that one, you never know what what uh, what dumb stuff your 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 viewers are gonna be into. <laughs> it's not dumb stuff, Zach. Everyone, everyone like I'm. It makes me happy that there are people into artisanal light bulbs. Artisanal light bulbs. Yeah. I first heard about artisanal light bulbs on oh, Portlandia. I thought it was a joke. Yeah. And then I later found out it was not a joke. No, not a not a joke. Not a what, joke. What is the? Is there a con for artisanal light bulbs? Do you, I don't actually know. Yeah, and what is the? I don't actually know, but I bet there is. It's probably like what? What would the name be? It'd be like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be like Lincoln. You know, there's no sort of punny, punny well, name might be. like that. We've got we've got some we've got soups here in Liberty. They can do puns. Uh, they can come up with something. A pun crew. Yeah, on the job. Okay. Um. The funny thing also about this stuff is you kind of have to wait for it to dry to see. It takes a little while to see the full picture that of yeah. what it is that you got. Okay. Um, I still need to keep working on the base. Uh, dry, remember you saw the puddles <laughs> yeah. and how they looked. Most like oh, that, wow. that's starting to be what I want, but other ones just kind of. So I what I have to do is wet it, and then I'm actually gonna get a um a, a Q-tip, a Q-tip yeah. and pull it off. Yeah. But the front is, I think, 
That's good. More closer to what you yes, want. Yes, yes. Because I do. I I, I like it blends the, in a little. Yeah, more. you want to blend it in. Yep. I think the little specks of the fu- of the powdery vibe are good. Yeah. And this is kind of more what I'm. There you go. Yeah. Going for here. For so sure. like this area right here, right, is so deep, and now that it's dried, there's there's very almost no verdigris there at all. Um, okay. So let me grab a grab a Q-tip while I do that. Uh, monthly challenge chatting time. Yeah. Um, if you are not, um, if you are not aware of this, if you are unaware, yeah. if you're unaware, we have this monthly challenge. Let me explain it. I never get to explain this. Somebody else always explains it. <laughs> um, it's kind of complicated. Essentially, yeah. Essentially, we call this Chrome Fort because uh, our mod Soups Super Reedy. You see him there in the live chat, um, uh, or he's in our Discord as well. Um, is uh, assembling and painting a Castan, Castellan Crow Not model. Russell Crow. Not Russell Crow, yeah. I always so think that, it's Russell Crow, and I'm like, oh, Russell Crow. Yeah. Um, and one of the prizes, if you win for the month, and I'll explain what that means, how you do that, one of the prizes is you get to um, t- uh, r- tell Soups how you'd like, to paint, ha- like him to paint a particular part of but this But just model. a part of the model. Just a part of this model. And then at and the end, one of the 12 winners will win this insanely painted model. He's broken the model up into 12 distinct segments. Yeah. And each month, somebody in the community gets to tell him how to paint one of the segments. Yeah. So uh, so it'll be very sort of chaotically painted, I think. But yeah. or, or maybe, I mean, this is, this is like, this is where Soups gets to show off his artistic chops. He right. Might, if right. he can make these sort of appear cohesive. Yeah. It's going to be quite the, quite the feat. So we'll talk about the theme for this month in a second. Um, but in the interim, the, the it's you're painting a model. Um, it doesn't have to be a model, um, but some kind of hobby project. And you're hashtagging crowing for it like this. You can paste it wherever. Uh, in, not paste it. You can Discord, post it yeah. wherever in the Discord. That makes sense. We have a hobby work in progress. We have a hobby finished. Most of them are probably going to end up in the hobby finished, right? Uh, but even if you want to do it, post it in critique. We actually do have a critique today, Brad. I forgot to prep you on the critique. Oh, nice. Um, that's it. Uh, we also will send you a. Um, we also will send you a physical prize if you would like to share your address with us so that we can mail it to you. You don't I have. have to, you don't have to. I have mailed a physical prize to last month's winner, Lara. I'm super excited for her to get her. Physical she did prize. get it. She did. Yeah, she posted a picture of it in Discord today. She oh, was nice! Very excited. Okay, amazing. Okay, then I can tell everybody what I got her in a second. Um, cool. Um, that's it. Now the theme for this month is illusion. The themes are always a little um, nebulous. Yeah, they're not. They're intentionally not, so. Intentionally so. So uh, there you go. Uh, I was actually thinking. You know, I'm not as uh, sort of insiders on this process. We're not allowed to win, but. Um, I still have fun entering, just, just uh, you know, because it's like a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so last month, I, our, the theme was new beginnings, and I entered a picture of all the basil clippings that I saw. <laughs> I that. got crazy. I saw about. that from from uh, yeah yeah. So when I finish this Optimus tra- Prime, Prime truck, I'm going to enter it because he's more than meets the eye. It's like an illusion. Right? Oh yeah, right. yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Yep. Right, I'm trying to pull up some of this with a brush first here, just because I'm being lazy and not getting out. And it actually is working. I can see that's working. Um, a Q-tip might work better, but I kind of like the texturing stuff I can do with a brush a little bit more. Mm. Um, oh yeah. So we will announce the winner from last month, New Beginnings, um, uh, on Sunday's hobby stream. By the way. Right. Yeah, and um, that's exciting to hear that Laura got her her uh, her 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 prize. Her prize. I can say that I what I did, um, I passed forward this wonderful uh, concept. The vacuum? The vacuum, right? Yeah. Because this was sent to us by Rudy Picardo. Rudy actually also messaged me today. I, I did not get a chance to respond. He wanted to know, and I might ask one of our mods to help me on this. He wanted to know when we first unboxed or revealed this. Oh, yeah. Because he wanted to watch. And um, I kind of forget. He, he, he sent me the date of when it got delivered. But anyway, we'll have this to This is one of the it. hobby products that we all were like, that's interesting. Yeah. And like, not quite sure. Like, that's not a thing that I would ever buy on my own. It's a vacuum. It's, it's a like vacuum. a desktop vacuum cleaner. You just kind of... You turn it on, and it, like, cleans up all the little... 
There's a bunch of stuff in there right now. I need to empty it. But yeah, it's just, it just, but, it's but amazing. But like, as soon as it's been sitting on your desk for a little while and you use it once or twice, you're just like, oh, wow. I yeah. use this all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I hope Lars was orange. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was white. What? Or, no, no, sorry. She just showed the outside of the box. Oh, okay, so I okay. Think she, I, I hope, she I hope it should have been orange. Um, they had some color options. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I picked, I picked the orange one for her. That's fun. Yeah. So, um, anyway, if, if you're into having a physical product, I will, I will send you a physical product. Uh, a, a light, a light, a light, a light hobby supplemental prize. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Try to send you something I think you might not have. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I will, Soups. I'll, I'll, I'll post it up. I think I kind of might have some hunch of where it is, but I, I don't exactly remember. Um, all right, poll closing. Um, yeah, I, I guess I thought I thought model trains would do better. It's not, yeah. Yeah, I mean... A lot of people don't want to admit it yet, I think is the thing. It did well, it just did not well. the top spot. Yeah. Yeah. It's also kind of adjacent, you know? It's like, it's not... It's like the one, it's the answer that we all know is the right answer, but like as moderate, to, mild to moderate hipsters, we, we don't want to admit it. Because it's just like too normal, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Interesting. Um, Brett, how are you? How, how's that going? Let's, let's, let's zoom um, in. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, oh, it's looking nice. Yeah, I realized, I, you know, at the end of today, I want to show off uh, this. I want this guy to be sort of done its terrain, so I don't have to stress too much about it. Um, but I, I hadn't started the the the, the trailer at all. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm just just putting some little black sponge. I'm doing a sponge, some sponge work on the trailer. Making it look ugly, look, making it look dirty. Um, <clears throat> running out of black paint, actually. But yeah, I got. Um, I, I started doing. I started doing the the metallic on the corners of this guy, and realized pretty quickly that I was going to be very far along on the on the main vehicle, but but not even started on the on the trailer. So bringing the trailer up to up to the same place as the as the cab. All right, so I'm definitely recommending if you work with the verdigris, yeah, that you keep a, a brush that you dry and keep clean to, yeah. to soak up the water. Like, you know, I said a toothpick, but I think this is actually a little bit better because you can kind of get, like, dapple, dappling, blend it in. Right. Um, Stipple it a little bit. And you can push in and really pull the wet stuff off, right. back off, yeah. And you're are you getting the brush wet before you do that? Uh, no, I, I dry it because I want it to absorb the, the water, right, right, the, the okay. verdigris, the, the, the product. Yeah, I feel like using this dirty down stuff is, uh, is a whole skill in and of itself. It's like very, it's an awesome product, but there's, there's a learning curve associated with it. A little and, bit, a little and, bit. But once you figure it out, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and they are, um... This stuff is not cheap. The no, the, it's like maybe twenty dollars a bottle. About, yeah, about that. Yep. Um, and and they the the company Goblin Hut that, that distributes it here in the U.S. Uh, is a sponsor for Maelstrom Mixer, and they've donated, I think I want to say four sets of the like oh, the wow. full sets of the because there's three or there's four of, of four I think. So then they have the new rust. One yeah, they have the too. new one, yeah. and then. Um, it's like a hundred and fifty dollar value, and then uh, it comes with some brushes too. Oh wow, um, those are very generous of them. So they, yeah, um, they're, um, they are. <laughs> I had a conversation with them at Adepticon. He was a really, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, I met them at Nova. Yeah, um, and he he told me that uh, when I first messaged him, he thought that we were Frontline Gaming. Not the the club's name is Faultline Forty K. Cause we're in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And he just saw my email address and assumed that we were frontline. He was like, I don't need to sponsor frontline gaming. Like <laughs> they have enough money. They can buy their own 
like he 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 was just like yeah i i uh i enjoy sponsoring smaller local clubs and and local events um and he was like yeah i i initially mistook you for for frontline i was like oh okay that, that checks out <clears throat> um but he was very excited to to get behind the event once he sort of realized what it was and who we were <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah, it's nice. I, I haven't I haven't used the new stuff yet. And I would say this is my I'm I'm starting to feel advanced with their with their rust. Yeah. I just used a ton of it on my Nighthawn army. Um, oh yeah, that's right. And so I'm starting to feel like I know I've been using it on terrain. I've been using I just used it where you also use some on our Flesh Eater Quartz army. Um, we gave them a lot of rusty weapons because, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're psychotic they're undead ghoul people who yeah um so uh I, i'm starting to feel confident with that one this one i felt like i learned a lot here on this stream just now the moss Serena and i have played around with a little bit but not much um and the moss i've had i i the moss does a thing and i'm and I, I know how to get to do that. Like the kind of each of these have like a take a brush, slather it on, done right. effect. And then from there you can you can go on. And and the effect with the moss when you do that is just very slick look slit wet wet looking moss. Right. Um like it's not moss you would put on a desert board. Okay. Or like even maybe like you would wanna if you put it on a temperate forest even type area. You you'd be you'd be implying something. You'd probably be implying weather mm. that it had rained recently or something like that. And then it, then the question would be, did you imply that everywhere else, right? Um, but if you applied it to a jungle, like a tropical rainforest or something, or a, an environment that's obviously humid, I think you're I think it's perfect. Okay. Like if you did like if you put it all over like a like a lizard men jungle lustria type setting, I think it would be fantastic. Okay. Um, or I'm sure you can also just matte varnish it down because it looks wet. It's very glossy. It, it looks pretty glossy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have to say though, I, I for the type of effect, this is this is a live and learn situation. Uh, for the type of effect that you and Colin might have been going for on this, I'm not sure I would have used this product. Okay. I honestly think I would use uh, a Citadel, um, not the Citadel Nicolic Oxide. Okay. Maybe that a little bit because that's somewhere in between. What I I think I almost would have used um, just like a contrast, like a turquoise type contrast. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen. You know, there are some yeah. products marketed as verdigris products that are, are basically just washes or contrast paints. This is something more than this that. is a lot more. This has the powder. Yeah. It's um, got some. This some is the secret sauce. It, it makes that opaque powder thing. And and if you wanted more of just like it, it's being tinted turquoise, right? You wouldn't. I don't think you'd want to use this unless you wanted to not shake it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then whatever happens happens with the bottom part of the bottle. That's probably also potentially an issue that might have happened here, is that if Colin hadn't shaken it up, yeah, and he was using it, he was accident. Which is this is like Brip on Colin episode. He this is like he might have accidentally been messing with the. The equation of how much of the, oh interesting <laughs> I don't know how much of it he actually used right but like the, it could have could have happened that way I don't know um because the yeah it is it's I'm I bring it up again because I just did another round and once again any area I didn't really scrub off yeah like the powder the powdery look just like returns um Zach I had a question for you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um. You've done a number of terrain boards. This is, you know, so we're talking about sort of narrative theme terrain. Um, you've done a number of terrain boards, and I consider you sort of a an expert on um, themed terrain boards, boards that sort of exude a vibe. You have this like vibe in mind, uh, color palette in mind, and you set about making a terrain board that that matches that mm -hmm. that image you have in your head how do you sort of get to that point of like like do you have sort of a in the shower moment aha moment where you're like or do you see a product and you're like i want to build a table around that product or a terrain kit um like how do you sort of 
get to that stage where you're like, I'm going to, this is the board I'm going to build. And, and like, how did you, how did you, like, take us back three weeks before you got to that moment of committing to building a train board of like how, how you came up with that idea? Um, uh, um, <laughs> I'm thinking the last board that we, that I made was, um, this kind of soul blight, uh, uh, Grave Lords kind of um, crypt, right? Kind of graveyard area thing uh, with these mausoleums and stuff. Um, that, yeah, I color palettes. For, color palettes big, um, especially like now, like with the stream, right? Um, color palettes pretty big. So like, we have um, like an orangish red mat. Um, that has like the hoodoos and and that stuff. We right. and then we now we also have gone like this other mat that this other board we had. Um, uh, our our friend Andrew had been borrowing. We got that back. That also uses like a red mat and has like these red trees on it. So we have like two red boards. So I'm not like gonna interested in making a red board. Right. Right. Um, so like we're good on red boards. We're good on red boards. I I do kind of like them to have like one main color, but that main color to sort of also be occupied by like a lot of a secondary color right so that was the soul blight grave lord board because i kind of was imagining it because meg has so much veracross i was kind of imagining it as like meant to be related to veracross okay um i wanted to have like they have a very naturalistic component to them they're like the most naturey of of the vampire factions. nature of the vampires yeah vampire tree huggers you're right so um i i use like green and moss and I don't know. Think about the time of the year. I also kind of wanted that to be autumn, like an autumn. Yeah, it definitely feels autumny when yeah, you look at it with the trees and stuff. So I don't. Um, oftentimes, the centerpiece will be the yeah the inspiration. Like, what's where would that centerpiece be? What else would be there? Yep. Um, I feel like that is how I have come at at boards in the past. With the centerpiece thought is the centerpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one, the first board I ever made was, um, <clears throat> featured this crashed oh, yeah. Imperial spaceship. Mm -hmm. And it, it basically, I imagined there's that scene in Rogue One, uh, where Ray, um, Ray, is that Rogue, Rogue One? Mm, no, that's, no. sorry, episode, episode seven. The first, the first of the new trilogy where you see okay, Ray okay. for the first time. She's like out in the desert. Um, and she's like living in this crashed like spaceship Hulk husk thing, and that that like I kind of wanted to recreate that scene where there's like um, a crashed Imperial spaceship in the in the desert. Um, and so I got I, f I saw this three D printable model of a crashed Imperial spaceship, and I was like, cool. Now I can I can do all the foam with with the canyons and stuff um, to create the desert canyony thing, and then this will be sort of the centerpiece. So yeah, I, I definitely feel your your comment about like the centerpiece. seeing yeah. seeing a centerpiece, then being like, yes, I want to make a board around that that thing. Yeah, I um, <laughs> Sir, Sir, Serena, you know, we had a vote on on stream recently for for a board, a new board to make. Yeah. Um, and the gloom spike gets, um, gloom spike gets, uh, mushroom kind of concept yeah. one. Um, and that's, you know, already Sarah and I have been chatting about kind of a centerpiece for that. Right. And we don't just want it to be, um, like a cave pillar or, um, Oh yeah. Cause a, that, that would, that would work. That would work, but we don't we, we don't want that or like just a cave pillar or we don't want just like a um uh like a giant mushroom, like the biggest mushroom. The biggest the mushroom is the yeah. center. So one, we yeah. think we're gonna maybe do something like a still. Um because okay. the idea is that's a farm where they're growing this. Oh um, interesting. death cat mushrooms and and they make like and then they um, make booze out of it. They make booze out of it. So we're thinking like maybe a still. I like that. Um, that's like neat. In, yeah. Um we want it to be something kinda interesting. Um <clears throat> Now another thing, sorry, real quick change the topic that I noticed when I looked at some statues is 
It looks like a statue. It one thing that seems to definitely keep vertigree from um, occurring on a statue. Okay. Is if um, people can touch it. Oh. Um, because you can kind of see areas, and you've seen this before. Uh, it almost stay like silver in that area, hmm. even, or it'll like it'll it'll age differently. Yeah. Um, and you can see like big rounded areas, often where people might touch. Hmm. Um, don't get the verdigree. So I'm kind of wondering. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to do that a little bit around the base. Yeah. Um, put some areas where somebody might sit. Or, oh. Again, there's the water or like here, like this is a big flat area. You guys can't see this, but I'm just showing Brett. Yeah. Like that area. Yeah. Or like this a little round nub where yeah. you could touch. Yeah. So kind of thought. Okay. I think I'm mostly cool with how that's coming out down in the bottom. You also kind of have to be careful. I, I think I, it looks like I took ever so tiny little amount of the bronze paint off while I was doing this. That's fine. Yeah. So I did it. What, it's is just like is it blue sp- underneath? It's like gray. Um, oh, no. You know what that is? What's that? Um, <clears throat> that's the wash. The So it's bronze paint, but the bronze paint was very bright. Uh, almost gold. And then it was darkened with... A sepia wash oh, okay. and, a, and a null oil, and so right. the, I think those washes you might have to touch that up. Are then. coming off? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is fine. Um, I kind of like the idea of like specific areas, like you said, that have been. Well, I don't. Do you see what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. It's it's extreme. Okay. Yeah. The, well, no, I I don't no, I don't think you can see what I'm talking about actually. That thing right there. Yeah. The little specks. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what time is it? Oh, we should do our critique. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me chat to you a little bit about the critique. Um, I actually have it pulled up here. I can pull up. This is from Madman. Um, oh, yeah. Who, who I've uh, been known to call Mad Dog. Right. That only happened once, but I thought that he was Mad Dog. He's now self-identified as um, Mad Dog. Yeah. Uh, so here it is. Actually, you know what, Brent? I'll just... Um, let me pull it up for uh, everybody at home. <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I was like, we can just look at it on Discord, Brent. Um, and then I raised that that wouldn't be beneficial to you guys um, watching. So here it is. Um, and he, here, here's sort of what he was yep. asking about. Yeah. Um, this is a model he's been working on okay, for a you, little you, while. Okay, you're, you're caught up on this. Um, yeah, so I guess my one, the one thing I don't know, uh-huh. and I'm not sure he ever actually said this, I don't know what this model is. Like, where does it, is this a AdMech model? That's what it says. Is here. it a GW um, model? It says it's. Oh, okay. Uh, it says... I don't recognize it. Oh, yeah. It has a break from painting ad mech. Yeah, does anybody know? It looks like a... Is this a heresy ad mech model? Iron Warriors? I don't know. Soups and chat. I bet Soups knows. Yeah, I see Iron Warriors. Oh, there's Madman himself. He says Iron oh, Warriors. Oh, okay. Iron Warriors. Uh, cool. It's like their special dreadnought. It's like, oh, yeah, because you were telling me that Thousand Sons have a weird special dreadnought. Everybody so kind of has, their... yeah, oh, 30K. 30K. Everybody okay. kind of has a special, there's a lot of, spe- like, a lot of Space Marine chapters have a special, like, dreadnought. Or, is this yeah. kind of the equivalent of their special dreadnought, Madman? Yeah, I think it sounds like it. Okay. Um, cool. So, um. Love it. That's, yeah. That's great. So that, that con- contextualizes it for me a little bit. Yeah, so, um. Yeah, I'm not a 30K. 30k guy, so it's a Perturabo's bodyguard. Ooh, oh, okay. Fun. They're like a, a, a bodyguard for a Primark. Primark, yeah. Checks uh, out. Okay, so here's the deal. I, I don't you've already gotten some good advice. I, I'm always I always bring out on critiques that I, I uh, a, a lot of the advice that's come before me is already insanely good. And I don't know that I would have any advice, but I would have I, I would I, I would mostly you asked about basing. That's what I would want to talk about the most. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but real quick, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot to say about, about anything like otherwise, um, you, you, you said, um, that you don't want to make it too bright. I don't think it's too bright. Nope. And, uh, but you also want it to maybe brighten it up a little bit. I don't, I don't feel like I know that I would base it before I'd make that call. Honestly, I know that sounds kind of wild, but, um, the whole yeah. like bases and faces thing is sort of like. Um, I think it's real. It's real. I would want to see, um, what base you're putting this thing on. Yeah. The basing could lighten it up quite a bit. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to add some brightness, 
uh, without sort of fundamentally changing the colors of the model. Um, you could consider doing some like OSL somewhere, like an energy effect. Maybe not even OSL, but just an energy effect. Yeah. Somewhere. Like maybe eyes. Eyes or like a real or subtle, on a weapon. A subtle yeah. red glow on eyes could be cool. Or um, <clears throat> I've seen like like you could do some gems. They could be sort of illuminated sensors or or they could be vents and the vents could be sort of glowing red hot because of the uh sort of heat the hot steam that's coming out of them or something um so yeah i think there's a you could find some clever spot to to put some sort of energy color uh, if you wanted to add some spots of color without sort of just adding more hazard stripes. Agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I I think like you I, I don't know, I, I I know this is the word art people use. I, I like the composition going on. I don't think it needs anything like you know to bring it up. For Iron but Warriors, like, yeah, that's yeah. their that's their jam. Um, but he's done a good job. But I, if you just like are lazy about Iron Warriors, they look pretty bad. But he, he hasn't been, especially no, the, the shield and and, and the, the weathering yeah. is, is is amazing, yeah. Um, Cody made a good point in, in Hobby Critiques, he said, uh, about your base, he said, something super mad and dusty to contrast against the luster of the armor. He said, Martian dust might be too much of a troop. Any alien dusty world. Yeah. Um, I think I agree with him. Uh, Martian dust, yeah, maybe, maybe too much of a trope, I guess. Like, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people use it. I, I, initially, when I thought about this, I the first thing that kind of came to my mind was actually that you could do anything. <laughs> like yeah, it's just black. It's mostly blacks and grays. Yeah. So so it th they're complementary to a lot of different colors. Yeah. Um, one okay, I have a couple thoughts. So one of my thoughts would be um, do something very kind of um, do something with very kind of like uh, print, like medieval world. Um, mm. like, like the Middle Ages oh, world and do like cobblestone but you can look at how cobblestone is painted and because I know you think it was just more gray um, but you can kind of get like a lot of interesting undertones in cobblestone like purples and stuff purples and tans like sand sandy colors fun oh yeah um, that's neat so like ruined ru honestly ruined stone would probably look pretty cool around Iron Wars and that is also like their thing yeah. They're like siege people, right? right? They like, yeah. I think that could be kind of cool. And then honestly, um, you would then say, well, okay, so I'm doing like ruined stone and castle bits and stuff. Yeah. And like, that's cool. But what kind of environment is that ruined? Is it purely urban? Um, and maybe you don't want it to be purely urban. And then I, I think what I would do is I'd really go heavy on the, on, on stone and on, um, on like, co yeah, cobblestone, ruined pillars, broken stone, stuff like that. Broken, yeah, elements, stone elements. Yeah, and then, down. and then yeah. get some like little tufts and some like little woodland scenic um, uh, uh, shrubbery piece thingies. Um, and, and so, you know, put like a little bit of like life in there. Like, yeah. oh, like they're strolling through this land that they finally um, destroyed, this like city or whatever. That they have to take, but also there's grass here. It's like a little bit of right. greenery or something. That's that's actually similar to the 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 basing scheme that I ultimately settled on for my Malifaux stuff was was co cobblestones, but the cobblestones are sort of broken mm -hmm. or there's like fallen stuff that they're stepping over. Uh, but then there's sections where there's like sort of in a cracked way there's dirt with a little bit of greenery coming up or the greenery is like coming up between the cracks and the cobbles um, and it looks really good i think that's a great i think that's a great call out um for this paint scheme specifically yeah i would kind of I, I i know it's more grays and such but 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 the flowers and the green greenery and the shrub the uh, tufts would be a cool way to add some some extra color and you could do the yeah, um, Madman, you could do whatever you wanted in terms of tufts. Like this in 2024, there are some crazy good, like flowers. You can do. You can do. We're, we're in a golden age of tufts. Golden age of tufts, really. <clears throat> really, we are. Golden age of tufts. Yeah, we're gonna look back and be like, how to you know? Flowers would be cool, actually. Flowers. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're sorry. We're gonna look back and be like, how did? <laughs> how did we live before? <laughs> you know, you could just. Spend $10 and get 100 little tiny flowers. 
put all over your base. You know what? They are they are pretty pricey though. Um, yeah, you're right. I was, I was I'm exaggerating. That's they're they're, they're, they're they, definitely not that cheap. They had them quick. Um, I think I've brought this up before, and it's believe me, not a brag, but I think I've sp- spent something like close to two hundred dollars gate base uh, on tufts for my goblin army. Oh yeah. Kind of accidentally. You're or you went very over the top on tufts. I went like heavy on tufts for those. It was kind of like designed as part of the look, but yeah. All right, Brad. I am trying to pull some of this off, and it is yeah. working, but it, it takes a lot of passes. I'm learning. it's a it's a slow and steady process. Um, you kind of pull it off, and it looks good. And then, like I was talking about Madman's uh, critique here for a yeah. while, and then I look back Let down, it and it's like it all came back. It like it's dr- like it's like un, un, like someone clicked click control, control Z on on like <laughs> everything I'd done, um, or like mostly they were right. like let's undo ninety percent of what you just did. Yeah. You're like removing it, but then as soon as it gets wet again, it it becomes transparent. But you can't tell after the water evaporates. Like, is it going to come back? I don't know. Right, right. Um, but I, it's it is slowly coming back. I think another way you could probably get a lot of it back is honestly just dry brushing some of these colors back. Yeah, I think that I think we might end up. With I think that. yeah, and I, I think it'll bronze. look good and and like because well, it'll hit the bronze and do silver. It'll too. look rubbed yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, man, man, awesome work. I saw this uh, for the first time today, to be honest with you. I haven't been in the Critiques channel for a few days, and I thought this looked very cool. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, Definitely uh, think of some way to shoehorn that into illusion theme and post uh, post crowing for it. I don't know if there is technically a rule about it having to have been started this month. Or just finished this month? Maybe you can answer that, Soups. With a well, actually. Okay, some of this I am finally starting to get to come off, though, which is nice. Nice. Um, this is really, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I'm, I'm having fun with this guy. I'm almost done, I think. You know, on Optimus, I did a little bit of edge highlighting. Uh, before I did the weathering. I didn't do that here, and I'm kind of okay with it. It's a terrain piece. I don't need to be super extra about it. You're doing, like, selective edge highlighting, it looks like. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the the chipping with the... On the edges, yeah. I mean, I like that. I, I, that's... No, I'm saying I went over and highlighted, like, a light green over oh, edges okay. before, I, before I did the weathering stuff. Oh, got it, got it. Um, here, now you just have to paint more uncomfortably. But then, yeah, what I realized is that I was doing the weathering over the edges anyway. And mm-hmm. so I was just p- painting over all of my edge highlights. So. I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm, I'm kind of into, like, the effect of uh, your edge highlight is weathering. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, I, I did that on my Orc Aeronautica fleet. For, that was like the first time I've done something like that, and I was like, "Oh, this just like totally works. Like I don't have to. I don't have to feel like I have to like separately edge highlight this right. now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of freeing. And, and it it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's all how much do you want to, how much time do you want to put in, and where's the the diminishing returns kick in as far as you're concerned and for terrain it's a very different calculus for terrain right right okay oh i need to do a little bit more on these gray viewports here We're at that time of the stream where we want to finish. Try to wrap things up. And we don't want to have to keep working on things afterwards. <laughs> have some kind of a grand reveal mm-hmm. if we can. Um, cool, yeah. I think, uh, so I you've done a lot. I want to go back to our train board conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you've done a lot more train boards than I have. I am, like, newer to this than you are. I did the the like crashed spaceship in the desert board uh, last year. Um, I'm sort of low key tempted to try to to do a board 
uh, based on on that statue, that imperial statue that that you're working on, um, the Sorotas mm -hmm. statue. Uh, there's a 3D uh, printable cathedral um, that that hit Kickstarter uh, in the last six months. That's really that's really nice. It's modular, so you can sort of make it as big you, as you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm tempted to, I, I, you know, I, I backed the Kickstarter, not done anything with the files yet, but that was sort of my vision when I backed it was like, oh, this will be, I'll use, I'll put this, the, the Sororitas statue up front, um, and then build, build up a modular cathedral and then do sort of a not ruined, you know, imperial shrine cathedral thing um because because that's like all of gw's cathedral stuff is all ruins mm -hmm. and so this would be a neat way to do a non-ruined cathedral is is 3d 3d printing it yeah the, so, the, I don't know, maybe, maybe i'll get there pegasus hobbies also has a not ruined cathedral oh do they that Cathedral and like the um when we use the kind of jungly board yep. Um, yep. for Sigmar, um I just I cut into it and ruined it. Oh, I was gonna but, say that one looks pretty ruined to me. But it comes with it comes not like that. Got it. Yeah. Okay, and that one's oh, okay. No there roof though. There's no roof to it, so like you'd have to figure out a roof. Someone for a while was making roofs for Pegasus Hobby kits on Etsy. It was super cool. They're using MDF, and then they I ordered one from them, and then like. He gave me my money back. He's like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's kind of a bummer. You can make your own though, maybe. The other, uh, the other board concept that I've been really kind of excited about trying is a some kind of a shipping dock, mm -hmm. and and these trucks would actually go really well with that. Is like, like, and and, and our friend Michael has a giant boat, like a container ship. That's right. An MDF right. container That's ship, right. which is amazing. So cool. That's right. And can you imagine, like, the port of San Francisco or the port of Oakland or something, like, done as a 40K board with just, like, giant stacks of crates, a boat, a massive crane, and you could, like, you could, like, move around the crane. The crane could, like, have rules. You could, like, if you controlled the crane, you could, like, move it around. It could be Did motorized. you see when we had the crane for the Mars Horde? Mars yes. used to have a really That's big crane. Right. Yeah. That's right. I, I just remember got, that. I got fed up with it. Yeah. Um, the crane stuff is fun. You could move the crane around and yeah. it could like, you know, depending on where it was, it could have different in-game effects or whatever. Um, I don't know. I like the idea of like, hey, this isn't just like a ruined city. This is like a ruined part of the city and it's the shipping the shipping quarter. Or and it ha as a result, it has like theme terrain for that. Or like, this is the... I don't know industrial quarter and so there's like factories and you're like fighting in amongst the these city block sized uh like manufacturing cells where they right. build build Lehman Rust tanks or something you know it just feels awesome maybe next year tune in See which of these ideas we settle on for Maelstrom Mixer 2025. All right. She's drying in some areas, but I think <laughs> she's ready for... For some kind of grand reveal? For dry brushing. Oh, for dry brushing. Yeah, yeah, uh, which we, we won't get to, I guess, here. Um, but I think that's what I would say next. I would do the bronze that you used yeah. next, and then I would honestly probably do like a little bit of silver. Yeah. Personally. Um, it looks... This is the completely un... <laughs> it looks totally wrecked right now. The truck looks amazing. The truck, yeah, the truck's... Uh, he's a little bit... I, the, I think I maybe went overdid it on the on the bed. Um, but... Eh, it's fine. Not too no. worried about it. No, why? It looks great. Looks great. I mean, that would be something people would be slopping or slamming things down. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I might go over that. Maybe I'll go over it with like a, a wash or something. That's just great to... weathering, yeah. Tone the silver down. You're, you've gotten really good at that um, that style of weather, the, chip the, the silver chipping. Yeah, thanks. I offered the paint chipping today, and you're like, nah, I don't need that. <laughs> oh, the chipping medium? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. I, I don't really... The chipping medium is only really good... Uh, it, it's not... I don't know. 
It's it's not better than what you did. It's good to make it look like paint came off and there's stuff underneath. Yeah. But you don't get that like worn like black areas or dark areas that you're putting around it. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. This looks good. Okay, we got some trucks. Yeah. I love these kits. I am super excited to play games with them. Um, yeah. And then I also have, like I said, these like little circle things. They're like gun emplacements that go in them. So you can have these be sort of weaponized. That's car fun. Cargo haulers. Are any well. of the missions going to do that? Then maybe. I haven't. Surprise. Uh, uh, stay like, tuned. I don't know. I haven't made any of the missions up. All right, let me. Uh, I have no idea what's going on with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I brought these cars. Uh, to show off and oh, I yeah. just haven't even showed them. Um, this is like more just sort of like cool cars that uh, like are just like grim dark vehicles that might exist in the like in the with the wealthy like millennium. wealthier people of, yeah. uh, might have them like yeah. a lim limousine. Um, these uh, these are going to appear on the same board. It's just like oh yeah, if your limo pulls up, here's where you might. This is the car you took to get there. Uh, these are from Wargame Exclusive. Makes these kits. Um, they're another sponsor of the event. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Here That's she fun. is. I would, like I said, I would, uh, it's going to look better. It's going to look toned down when some of <laughs> okay. the... Okay. I have to zoom out here. Agree when you do, um, the, when you do the dry brushing. <clears throat> okay. So this is what Zach's been working on this whole time. There she is. Um, yeah, this is, this is crazy. Um, this looks amazing. The, around the bottom, you can see you have to kind of go, I, I ultimately send, and see, this is drying, that area where it looks yeah, like right there's virtually none. Yeah. It, where, and I pulled it up with a rag, but still I know some of it's going to come back, which is good. We actually don't right. want it to be, and I think the dry rushing is going to take a lot of it out. Once this, yeah, there's there's moisture here still. Once mm -hmm. that dries, it'll it'll look a lot more similar to. Well, yeah, to the it green. should be a, a it should be a fairly low, um, it should be low. Yeah, but look on the camera how it looks insane. On the camera, it looks like there's even more than right. there is left. Yeah, and the difference between like up here where it's like sort of very bright still, mm -hmm. and down below, is is again much more stark in the camera too. But yeah. Yeah, Madman, um, her face is, uh, has the same, we talked about this a little earlier in the stream, but the designer of this 3D print file designed her face to sort of match the shape of the Umbral 6 model. So if you have the, the Vindicare model that was released as part of Warhammer Plus, uh, I don't know, maybe two years ago now, Yeah. Um, that's the same design. So you could either... Yeah, you could take your Umbral 6 model out of its head on its base and put it up in the statue if you wanted. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, Brad, I think we did it. Um, cool. So, so hopefully someone dry brushes that. Colin, probably. Colin, I'd be like, yeah. he'll have to go back and be like, God dang it, Zach. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I know it looks like I put a lot more on than he was doing, yeah. but, I, but I'm telling, like, convey this to him I'll, i can message him too like i think if you just the next thing i would do before i like toned anything else down was i do the bronze dry brush okay because yeah. the bronze dry dry brush is like gonna like take it takes like 60 percent of the verdigree away right and then i would do like silver over top sure um okay yeah personally that's what i would do cool that, um okay cool uh let's thank some mandrills thanks mandrills as always thanks everyone for supporting the channel Check out, uh, if you are interested um, and thinking about Master Mixer, check out the link underneath here. Um, ask Brett questions in, the, in our Discord if you, yeah. if you have, and he's going to be uh, able to answer those better than anyone else at his event. Uh, we're going to be there. Very exciting. Um, anything else, Brett? Did we do it? Yeah. We did it? Yeah. Great job. Great job today, Zach. Thanks for the help. Margarita time. This looks amazing. Uh, yeah, time yeah, for, uh, time some for chips and margs. Chips and chips and margaritas. Uh, folks, as we like to say, be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and always be creating. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.